Today we're going to talk through the LG front load washer. And so a lot of technicians and companies don't like to work on LGs and Samsungs only because they're different, right? Different level of training, expertise, um, touch points, and just knowing some of the nuances that you have on LG versus Whirlpool versus GE. So what we're gonna do today is just kind of talk about the machine overall. Uh, we're gonna pop the top off here and we're going to uh, take apart a few pieces and, and just have a conversation. So while we're doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the top off. Right, so washers are, are standard, um, similar to the training we did for the dishwasher, okay? so. But we always say form fits function. When you understand the why, then the how is not difficult. Okay, so a washer in its simplest form would be like old school washing clothes. See, I don't know, my grandma had one of those old school washers, right? <laughs> you take it, <laughs> crank stuff through uh, into a basket. Uh, but anyway, so you're gonna have your water line hooked up from your home. And then you're gonna have this hooked into your, into your drain, okay? And so you have a hot water valve and a cold water valve, all right? So you start your cycle. All of them don't drain first, but a lot of them do, okay? So it'd take the drain pump to get the old, dirty water out of there. And then from there, it, whatever you setting you choose, it'll start your wash function, okay? So it starts pulling the water in. So, you know, if you choose tap cold, it's only going to open a cold water valve and you can see the valve and the lines coming in to your soap dispenser tray that goes into your tub. Okay. Now, if you choose hot only, guess what? It's only going to open your hot water valve to send water in to the soap dispenser into the tub. Now, if you choose warm, which valves do we think they open? Both. Absolutely. You open both of them, right? Cold and hot so it can mix it in. So let's talk through this. So a common issue is one of the valves fail and then you get low fill, no fill, or um, it just errors out on you. So what you have to do, or at least what I do, is I put it in test mode, I try to isolate, okay? Hey, turn the hot valve on by itself. Hot valve comes on, boom, turn the cold valve on by itself. Cold valve comes on or doesn't come on, then I can understand a little better. Um, another point here is leaks. So these are just, solenoids in here okay so these solenoids i believe you changed one out before nava on the washing machine so these solenoids start leaking and then water comes over the top and then there's a leak on the floor or something and you don't know where it's coming from always check these and so if one's leaking and you have to replace it my recommendation always is to replace it in pairs right because they both have similar lifespan so if you're already in here you know my analogy is look if I'm having a heart surgery and you see a blood clot, <laughs> don't sew me back up <laughs> and then tell me, hey, come back so we can get another clot next week. You know, <laughs> if you see it, let's go, let's go ahead and knock it out and keep moving. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, any questions on the, the water inlet valve coming in? All right. And then you can test these uh, for resistance as well. And so here we have the control board. So this is our main brain for this machine. So you have the control board here and you have the user interface here, okay? Beauty of having the control board right here, you know, versus down in the bottom in the front or someplace inaccessible is that it's easy to get to, pop off, and you, you can do a lot of your testing right from the board, okay? So you pull the manual, it tells you, like for instance, it says, A, the drain pump should have, let's say 10 ohms of resistance, okay? This part should have continuity, door switch, whatever. So instead of having to go in here and take all this off, just pull the diagram up, right? And the wiring diagram is right here. So if y'all look here, which I like about LG, they just slap the wiring diagram right on top of the soap dispenser. So you can sit here, boom, as you test from the board and just see what's going on, okay? You learned something today, all right. Okay, so then 
I look at a washing machine just like a computer. This is the keyboard and this is the motherboard. Okay. So you're doing your, you know, enter, control, alt, delete, <laughs> copy and paste. <laughs> this is interpreting all that and saying, okay, except here you're typing in drain. Bam. Okay. Drain pumps over here. Let me send power down to the drain pump for X amount of seconds, whatever logic is on the, on the, uh, on the control board. Whenever you have a dead board condition, you can come here and verify our volts DC going to this panel. If yes, then we start need to, we need to start looking at the panel. If no, we need to look back at the control board or either scenario, we need to inspect the wiring harness in between because possibly there's just a drop in the signal um, from one to the other. Okay. Any questions on the control board and the keyboard? Okay, all right. So let's get past that. So now when you come here, we have our tub here and then we have our gaskets that seal the tub, right, to stop leaks. So when this gasket gets worn over time, you'll see like a trickle of water usually come down here at the bottom because this part should seal to the door, right? Now, another thing is, which I find very interesting. I have some washers that customers will have like maybe a year or two, less than five years. And this gasket is full of mold, right? They're like, hey, I wipe it down. For some reason, it just keeps coming back. Then you'll have the washer, like my friend in LaGrange, a great customer, had a washer for 15 years. Gas, it looks brand new, okay? I'm like, I'm like, so I'm asking like, what are you doing to keep this gasket clean? And she's like, Lamar, cause she's like this tall, right? She's like, Lamar, <laughs> there's two things I do. I said, okay. She's like, I'll wipe it down after every wash. To every single wash. She's like, I just get some, you know, white vinegar and towel and I just wipe it down. I said, okay. She said, the second thing I do is, she said, I prop the door open. You know, I either leave it like this or I might put it here and I have like this little separator that keeps the door open for me. She said, that way it allows airflow so that water doesn't stay in there. And I'm telling you, those two things will make a difference for anybody who has a front load washer and wants to prevent that from happening. Because once it happens, you can, uh, you can put bleach on it, you can spray antimicrobial, it's coming back. Like it's just, that's just the way it works. So, but we do change these out. So Applying Professionals is happy to change this out for somebody that needs a new gasket, all right? So we're gonna grab a, grab a gasket just so you see what it looks like. So this is pretty much, you know, the gasket when you buy a brand new, right? So you, you put it in there, you tighten it up. And actually I'm gonna show you here. Do we have that red tool? All right, so we look at this gasket and the tension is provided by this spring. And so you can take the spring off and this gasket just seals around the rim here. So you can see what the inside of the gasket looks like. And then you have a hose here. So as water is sloshing around, it comes through this hose here, goes down under the tub and down to the drain pump. So like I said, definitely a common leak point as you get older, it just, you know, get worn. The seal isn't as tight as it used to be but we can change those out. Then here you have your door lock. So this is your door lock right here. And so this piece right here just locks into there. It has a safety mechanism. So when it starts spinning, it has to lock the door, right? Cause that spin is at a pretty high RPM. So you wanna make sure it's locked. So, you know, if you have little kids or whatever, they're not opening the door up or, or if it's in the middle of a cycle and it's full of water, you know, you don't want that water coming out when you open the door and flooding the house or something like that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are actually going to turn this around. I wanna show the back, we're gonna take the back off. All 
All right, now if you can remove those screws, let me give you your. Uh, for most of the front load washers, yeah, the panel, the back panel is only this big. Okay. Right. And it's only this big because it's giving you access to the motor or the stator assembly. Okay. Gotcha. All right. This is your cover, and under your cover is the stator assembly. Actually, let's go ahead and take that, let's go ahead and take that uh, cover off. You want this? I would think it's for the wash mode, like the cycles. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, I think you are. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, so there's a, there's a main screw that holds it together. Okay. okay. And so these come, these usually come with a pretty long warranty. So this, so this washer is called a direct drive washer. Okay. And so let's go ahead and pull that uh, cover off. Perfect. Okay, so this is called a direct drive washer, right? And so let's walk through. And this is straight from LG, okay? This is the direct drive motor, all right? And it can be driven from stop to maximum speed and infinite steps in either direction. So, you know, when you see it, you'll see a washer go this way, then go that way, then go that way, right? This way, okay? Now, let's look at this. Quick question. Don't count. Okay. How many poles are on this stator? Over 20. 40. 40? All right. So there are 36 poles on the stator, all right? <laughs> I got a cheat sheet. Okay, so there's 12 permanent magnets spaced around the rotor. Okay, there are no brushes to wear out. Unlike a more traditional brushless motor, the rotor surrounds a stator rather than being attached to it. Okay, and, and the way it works is it's just magnets. Okay, so there's like no traditional motor, but those magnets are what causes it to go left and right, right? It reverses. So the key thing here is these fail. I just replaced two of them last month, all right? And when they fail, the symptoms you're gonna have is, A, it doesn't turn at all, okay? B, it may turn a little bit and stop. Like it may do one revolution and just stop, okay? Um, so you always wanna check this for voltage. Easiest way, Put it in test mode, mm -hmm. put it on spin, you know, because if you already have easy access to the back, bam, you can put it on spin and you can check voltage right here coming into it, which this is probably our reason why I didn't spin, because <laughs> I unplugged it. Okay, but you can check voltage coming right into it. So how do you know which one is bad? You test, what, what, what do you mean which one is bad? Like if that's all just one piece. Yes, yeah, this is one piece. I didn't know if you took like each little piece out. I was mm -mm. Like, nope, okay. this is, these. you take these screws out gotcha. and this one piece comes out. Oh, okay. All right. So, so let me see something. Can you plug that in real quick? Anything moving back there? No. Let's do this real quick. Okay, All right. Let me know your fingers away from. <laughs> All right, so you see that? So, I'm going to do it again, but do you notice do you notice the nuance on there? Number 1, when we pull this cover, we have the magnetic field, okay? So this stator and this cover are working in conjunction, right? So that's what's creating that magnetic field and that's what's turning it. So, do it again. All right. In 
tell me if you see it rotate <clears throat> counterclockwise. Yeah. Which way is it going? Counterclockwise. Okay. So when I put it in test mode, I can change the RPMs and the speed of it. Okay. So let's go. All right. Okay. Right, we got water valves. Okay, perfect. So now I'll tell you one safety precaution, right? So if you're working on these machines, and let's say you have it in test mode. So when you have it in test mode, a lot of the brands, it bypasses the safety mechanisms of making sure that the drum is balanced, right? So if you were running a regular cycle and then the drum became unbalanced, like let's say one of these springs broke or something, what doesn't matter? The drum became unbalanced, it would stop the cycle, right? It would say, oh man, we got a problem here, you know, with too much friction, too much vibration, boom. But if you have it in test mode, it bypasses that. So you gotta be careful, right? So you start getting this thing up to real high RPMs. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the videos, like those things can like blow up, you know? It's like, cause this is like a motor and a drum just spinning at a high speed. So if it goes out of control, you know, then you're gonna have. And we've heard that in houses before, you know, or somebody says, hey, my washer's walking across the floor. And it's literally walking across the floor. Like, <laughs> it was plugged in here, and you get there, and it's like over here. Yeah. It's like, what happened? Okay, so that's just something you got to be cautious of. What I want you to do, Nava, when I put in test mode, I want you to check for electricity. Nope, not that way. This way, this way. Okay, yeah, just check with this, and we're gonna check for voltage. You're, you're checking the cord. You're checking the cord coming into the um, the stator. I'll do it low. One second. Put it in test mode again. Okay. Should be low speed. All right, hear that? Okay. So that's something I like to do just to see if I'm back there is the control board sending power to the stator. Okay. So that's a dead giveaway, right? Mm -hmm. If the control board sending power to the stator and the stator is not moving, okay, that's number one. And then there's a second test um, where you can kind of check resistance. Uh, through the stator as well. All right, any questions on that? No. Nope. Okay. So when you take these off, we already took the uh, back panel off earlier, that's fine. You take, you take your screws off, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and unplug it. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and take it off. All right. Great question, Melissa. <laughs> Let's put it back on. <laughs> just, just so you can get a feel of it, so you can see how it. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like a force field. You can put it down right there, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. And then, like I said, we're not going to do it, but you take these screws out, boom, uh -huh. unhook the power cords. That's how that thing comes out. Then you grab the next one, and you put it on there. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so next we're going to do, we're going to turn this back around, and then we're going to go through putting that gasket back on. You can leave that off. Bam. So we're gonna say, did I lock the door back? All right, let's plug it back in. Yeah, probably. 
No, nah, I, no. no. It's just me. I, I, I kill power before I unlock the door. Okay. So, and like if the drain pump fails, uh -huh. it's gonna lock the door by default. Okay. And that's why you get to, they're like, hey, my clothes are stuck in there, right? Yeah. Like, what do you think people do when clothes are stuck in the washer? They break it. Break the door lock, stick it to the door. Yeah. yeah, so you always wanna take the door lock. Yeah. Because by default, they're like, I gotta get these clothes out. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they pop the door open and you get there, you know, and you going blind. So, yeah, always test your door lock while you're there just to make sure, it, you know, we didn't get a pop a lock on the door. <laughs> All right. OK, so we're going to go ahead and put this uh, gasket back on. OK. And so I'm going to let Nava do it first. OK. That's how we learn. And I'll let you do it. OK. And you probably want to put that down because your first step is going to be obviously getting the door gasket secure to the frame. You need me to come this way a little more? Did our inner, our inner gas, inner uh, spring come off? Yeah. No, it isn't. We may have to take the door off and get that inner spring back on. Uh, some of them you do. Okay. Now this one, since we have access from the top side. Okay. Oh, okay, we could probably get it seated in here. Well, yeah, cause the, so the inner gasket secures, I'm sorry. This gasket has an inner spring that secures it to the inner tub part. Okay. That side that knob was on secured it to the door. So yeah, that inner spring, we take it off. Yeah, you want to get that secured before you do the outer spring. Because okay. both of them are going to cause the same issue, right? It's going to be leaking, not going to be sealed properly. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you, without this tool right here, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult. Yeah. You know, because you want it to stretch it out. Otherwise, you'll get that new uh, spring on. Uh -huh. And once, the, like, you put the right, left side on, the right side pops off, you know? Yeah. So these, this kind of keeps it, keeps it kind of even so you can get it, you can get it over. It's like it's stuck in the groove. Yeah. All right. So what I would do here, you got a flathead over there. Screwdriver. And I would just, it looks like it's just what, this little piece right here. Okay, all right, that'll work. All right, Melissa. 
Your turn. Okay. All right, so then if we see here, and you, and you, can, you can look here, put the light here. And you see where this gasket comes around your door frame. Yeah. And so when it starts filling with water, when it starts wearing, you can kind of see some wear spots right there. Okay. You'll see you'll see that water pool up right here. And like I said, it'll just start dripping right down the middle. Alright. So there's something to think about. And so if, what if it's leaking from the one on the inside? Does it leak like straight down through here? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Don't get caught up in where the water's at on the floor mm -hmm. because water travels to the path of least resistance. So okay. it could be leaking back here and end up over here. And then you're sitting here chasing a spot over here. You know, you just got to run it, look at it, you know, feel around, find out where it's leaking from. So leaks aren't that hard because you just got to find out where it's leaking from. Yeah. And once you find out where it's leaking from, okay, you plug the leak, change the part, do whatever you have to do. Um, but great question on that. All right, let's go ahead and put, let's go ahead and put that on the back. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the top back on. Yeah, last but not least, drain hose issues. This is a safe, this is your safety message, okay? Water safety, okay? So what you'll see is these will be pushed down to a drain and then they're like zip tied or not zip tied, right? The problem happens when they're not secure. So then they run a load and it just lifts up. It's water pressure, right? So it lifts up and water spraying and you, nobody knows until it comes to the roof, all right? I mean, it comes to the ceiling or the basement, yeah. okay? So when you buy these and aftermarket, you buy a U, and it's, it's, all it is is a plastic piece, right? And this clips into the plastic piece and goes into your drain. Mm. And then you take the plastic piece and you zip tie it to the hot uh, water line or cold water line or the valve, just something to hold it in place always, okay? okay? So if you ever have to move a washing machine to, you know, work on the dryer because sometimes it's a tight space or you have to pull this out to work on it, always, 100% of the time, make sure this thing is zip tied, secured in some type of way down the drain. Okay. Okay? Number two. Second thing is, if this, okay, if this is in the drain, so just imagine, imagine this is your drain pipe going to the city. This is in the drain and it's pushed too far. This is really what's happening. At the end of the day, this is really what's happening. Okay, so then it's gonna drain and it's gonna be a slow drain or no drain because you, you can't get the water to come out at the correct, at the correct um, velocity. So you just wanna make sure you know it's like halfway down the drain so it goes down. The other thing we've seen is uh, there's a plumbing issue with the house and so the water flow from the washing machine is so fast and then there's a clog or whatever and then the water just pretty much comes back and you can hear it, you know, and it comes over the pipe and then there's water on the floor. So those are things you kind of walk in, you kind of look for, you know, if somebody says, man, I don't know where this water is coming from, you know, and so then you start running the cycle and as you're running the cycle, you don't see water anywhere, but they're telling you, man, all this water was on the floor, then you can anticipate there's something going on with that, with that drain. So as you're running it, you know, once you hit the drain function, you want to, number one, listen, you know, just like a glass, right? You can hear when that water starts getting full. So you want to listen if the pipe is getting full and you want to watch and you want to watch that pipe to see if you have any water coming up. You know, and if you see water coming up, obviously you just press the, press the pause button so it stops draining. But those are the kind of things I see when it comes to the drain holes on a, on a washing machine. Okay. Thank you for going through the LG washer training with me. There's a few things we covered. So number one, we cover the water valves. Hot water valve, cold water valve, common issues. Number two, we cover the control board, right? The main control board, what it controls, how it controls it, how power comes in, how power goes out, and you know, correlate that to a motherboard on the computer. And we talked about the user interface panel. That's our front panel here, correlated that to the keyboard on the computer. And just went through the different test modes so you understand how that works. Uh, next thing we covered was the motor and the stator assembly. Just understanding how those magnets and how the uh, clockwise spin, counterclockwise spin, all works together. And then we uh, round it out with the door gasket, okay? Front door gasket, taking it off, putting it back on, 
using a tool that makes it a lot easier to get it on and off. Um, and then some of the common failures as far as leak points and you know just wearing out over time and keeping it mold free. So that, that wraps up our training for today. Okay, thank you.